Good morning, everybody, and welcome to All Age Worship today. The sun's shining, it's crisp, it's lovely. And hopefully today we will go out still feeling the joy that spring is on the way. So we have a special welcome to any visitors today. And if you are with us, then please feel very welcome to join us for refreshments in the hall, up in the hall, after the service. Also today, we have a bring and share lunch. And, um, you know, just please go up and join in. And um, we do encourage people to just bring and share. And um, you'll be made very welcome. And if you have any mobiles, could you just please put them for silent? Now, this morning, there is a very honest little girl, Katrina. Where's Katrina? Katrina, there's Katrina, and she found a £10 note on the stair going up to the hall. So, has anybody dropped a £10 note? <laughs> I think it was there because Katrina was here early because you were here when I got in, weren't you, Katrina? So I, I, I think it was not anybody, but shall we put it in the offering? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I think we've got a gentleman here, Mr. Greenfingers, who'd like to have a word with you first. I thought it was rather fun to stick this into the hole in the back of the chair and I was quite amused how many of you noticed it. This is a flag iris, I think, and it comes out nice and blue and uh, just at the end of the uh, border in front of the church there, my wife and I yesterday dug out a load of these and we've left them lying on the ground. If you'd like to take a couple, feel free and we shall replant the ones that are left. And Ken asked me if I would just remind you that the, the list of things to be done with the gardening is here and it will be on a table up in the hall during food and then it will be on the notice board just in the corridor here for the rest of the week. Please do sign up for what you're prepared to do. Thank you. Thank you very much to David and Althea for the work that they did on our garden. Now I have a very nice announcement to make. The baby boy on the 1st of February was born and he weighed 8 pounds 8 ounces. And we say congratulations to Jenny and Jay and baby Caleb and Nanny, who's sitting at the back. Nanny Cathy, congratulations. <laughs> and now I'd like to pass you on to our Minister Peter to lead us in our service today. Thank you, Peter. Good morning, friends. Good morning. And welcome to our service on this first Sunday in February and we're all together for worship today. Whether here in church or watching at home later, you're very welcome here among us. Ivy is going to be the first of our children taking part in our service today and she's going to bring us a special welcome. that just now as the group lead us in two songs. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, and then our God is a great big God, a song that has actions if you'd like to join in. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Gary. Okay, let's come back, Jesus. Shall we all rise and sing this, these couple of songs? Open the eyes of my heart.
made us and loves us, and we bring him our thanks today. And we've got a prayer of thanksgiving. Now I'm just going to ask Jonathan if we're all reading this, or have we got a reader? All minus one. Okay, so are we joining in the prayer together for this one? No. Oh, oh, brilliant. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Come on. <laughs> Let's ask prayer. Dear God, we want to thank you today. We thank you for this brand new day. We thank you for the wonder of this world you've made. We thank you for the animals, birds, trees and flowers. We thank you for the life we live. We thank you for your loving care. We thank you for our church family. We thank you for Jesus, our friend. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Josh. That's a surprise. Well done. Well, who likes watching animated films? Yeah, good. Well, we've got a fun quiz for you now uh, on screen. I'm going to show you some people that you might recognise. And, oh, Sam's going up there, you see. So, all generations are invited to join in this. And I'm going to show you a picture, you can tell me who it is and what film it is. And then the next slide, I'm going to show you either a brother or a sister. And see if you can tell me, before we show it, what the name of their brother or sister is. Okay? So, who have we got here? Any hands up? <coughs> Anna, and somebody else tell me which film this is from? Frozen, yeah, that's right, Frozen. And before we show you, she has a sister. Now, what is her sister called? Lydia? Elsa, let's have a look. Yeah, Elsa, well done, excellent, very good start. Right, let's see who the next one is from a Disney film. Going back a bit, this one, a few years. James. It's not Cinderella. No, it might look like Cinderella. You, you have another go. It is Peter Pan, and which character is this from the film Peter Pan? Maybe you might need some. It's one of the darling children. Wendy. It is Wendy, that's correct. Well done. Now, Wendy had two brothers. Who can remember the names of the darling? It was John. It was one. Not Peter. Michael. Excellent. Well done, Albert. Let's have a look. There we are. Brilliant. Yeah, John and Michael. Right, let's get a bit more up to date now. Now, which film is this from? Oh, uh, I can see you watching <laughs> Alan. The Incredibles, that's right. And um, can anyone remember the name of this young lady, Katrina? Violet, that's right. Violet Parr. Now, anybody know the names of her two brothers? Oh, yeah, I think so. Well, yeah. Dash. Dash and. Baby Jack Jack. Let's have a look. Yeah, brilliant. That's excellent. They're her brothers. Now, let's go back a little bit. Now, we put his name on there. That's the duck called Huey. Now, first of all, who was Huey? And he's got two brothers, but who are they? Who do they belong to? Okay. And who are they? Donald Duck's nephews. Let's have a look. Yep, there's Hugh, <laughs> Huey, and Louie together. Brilliant. Well done. And I think we've got one more. Oh no. Who's this young lady? Well, what, what film is this from, first of all? Do you know? <laughs> okay, alright. Uh, yeah, Trina. Despicable me, that's right. And who is this? Do we know her name? 
begins with the letter M. Five letters. Yeah. Marco, brilliant, excellent. Now that's good. Now Marco's got two sisters, their partners in crime. Yeah, Katrina again. Agnes, that's right, and Edith. Yeah, brilliant. There we are, excellent. Can you start a round of applause then? Well, all of these characters got into adventures, and because they were brothers and sisters, sometimes they got into arguments and fights, but other times they pulled together to win through. And with most families, they had bad days and their good days. And two brothers now, Ronaldo and Jedi, are going to tell us now about bad days and good days. Not especially in their family, because I wrote this. Uh, <laughs> but maybe you might recognise yourselves in their words. On our bad days, we can argue and fight. On our good days, we make a great team. On our bad days, we can be jealous of what the other one can do. On our good days, we are glad to be different. On our bad days, we compete with each other. On our good days, we are best friends. On our bad days, we think parents are favourites. On our good days, we, we know we love is equal. God, God loves, loves us on our bad days, days and good days. God helps us to love just the same. <laughs> Is that true in your house? Yeah. It's true in mine. <laughs> yes, sometimes we need God's love and forgiveness and grace in our families when we get it wrong. And we're going to put a prayer of confession on the screen now. Just give you a moment to read that through. And then we're going to join in saying this prayer of confession together. So together, let us pray. Dear God, I want so much to be good, but sometimes I bubble over with excitement and it all goes wrong. Dear God, I want so much to be good, but sometimes I explode with temper and it all goes wrong. Dear God, put me back together again and help me to begin again. Help me to forget my mistakes, but to remember what they told me. Amen. Well, in the Bible you can find all kinds of families, and none of them are perfect by any means. And Elizabeth and I are going to tell you about one of those families now in our Bible story. So I'm going to invite Elizabeth to join me here. So we share this together. <coughs> this month, Sunday Club are going to be following the story of Jacob. And today we want to tell you the first part of their story from the book of Genesis with words and pictures. But first of all, we need to tell you about the background story, what came earlier. I wonder if you remember the story of Abraham and Sarah. Well, God gave Abraham's family a part in his plan. God made a covenant or a promise that they would have many children, that Abraham would start many nations, and most of all, that God would be with him and with all of these nations, and their promise would be passed down to every generation. Well, God did what he promised, and Abraham and Sarah had a boy named Isaac. Isaac grew up and married Rebecca. Rebecca couldn't have children, but Isaac had learned from his dad, Abraham, that if he prayed to God, he might answer his prayer. Sure enough, God answered Isaac's prayer, and his wife became pregnant 
and not just with one baby, but with twins. Rebecca had the feeling all moms do when they're going to have a baby. She felt her twin babies moving around in her tummy. They moved around so much that she asked God, why is this happening to me? She was worried about how they were moving inside her. God answered her saying, your children are very different one from another. One of your children will lead a group of people that is stronger than the other, and the oldest child will serve the younger one. This was strange because usually if you're the oldest child in the family, the younger brother or sister looks up to them and want to do what the oldest is doing. But in the case, the older brother would work for the younger brother. When the twins were born, the first and oldest boy to be born was named Esau. He is easy to remember because he was red and hairy all over. Well, right behind him came his younger brother, Jacob. And as the boys got older, they liked doing different things. Maybe that's true about you. Esau was good at hunting and loved doing things outside. And Jacob liked to stick around home and do things on his own. And because Jacob stayed at home a lot, he learned to cook with his mum. One day, he had made some of his delicious stew that everyone liked. Esau had been out early in the morning hunting, and he was very hungry. So hungry that he could smell that delicious stew from a distance. As soon as Esau got home, he asked Jacob, Quick, let me have some of your stew. I'm starving. Jacob replied, First of all, give me your birthright. Wait a minute. You're probably wondering what a birthright is. Jacob and Esau's family believed that the oldest child should receive double of all the things they would leave behind after they died, and this was the birthright. Things like money and family, treasures, and the farm with all the animals. So when Jacob asked Esau for his birthright, Esau should have said, no way, that's something special for me, and I need to use it because every gift I receive is a gift from God. Instead, Esau could only think of how hungry he was, and he said, Yes, go ahead, you can have my birthright. Just give me some food before I starve to death. By choosing food over his birthright, Esau did a bad thing. He made a decision he couldn't change, and he disappointed God by not seeing the importance of his special gift he would get later on, and choosing a silly thing like a bowl of soup instead. Well, the story isn't over yet. The next part of the story is about Jacob and the bad choices that he made. <coughs> old father Isaac was getting old, and he wasn't able to see very well anymore. He wanted to give his oldest and favourite son Esau his blessing before he died. This blessing was the same special promise that God had promised to his grandfather Abraham and then to his father Isaac. Isaac loved the food that Esau hunted and prepared for him. So he told Esau to go hunt and prepare a special meal for him. And then he would give him the blessing. But wait, Rebecca overheard Isaac talking to Esau and rushed to tell her favorite son, Jacob. She said to Jacob, your father is about to give Esau his blessing and I want you to have it instead. You need to go get two of our goats and bring them to me. I will prepare them just the way Isaac likes it. Then you can take it to him and he will give you the blessing instead. Jacob replied, but mom, Esau is a hairy man. And what if dad touches me and realizes that I'm tricking him? His mother said to him, 
Don't worry, you can wear Esau's clothes and we'll put the goat hair on your hands and neck so he'll never know. So they did just that and Jacob went to see his father pretending to be Esau. Hello, father, Jacob said. Hello, and who is this? His father asked. It's me, Esau. I have brought you the food you wanted so that you can give me my blessing. Jacob lied. Come closer so I can touch you and know that you are really my oldest son Esau, said his father. So Jacob went to Isaac and he felt his hands and said, You sound just like Jacob, but your hands are just like Esau. Are you really Esau? And Jacob chose to lie again. I am. So Isaac ate, and when he was finished, he asked, Come and kiss me. When Jacob went to kiss him, Isaac smelled the clothes he was wearing, just to make sure it smelled like Esau. Since Jacob was wearing Esau's clothes, his father believed that he was with Esau, and he gave the blessing to Jacob. Just as Jacob finished getting the blessing, he thought he heard Esau coming, so he quickly snuck out of the back of the tent. Just as he was walking away, Esau entered the tent with the food he had prepared for his father. His father asked, Who are you? It's me, your son Esau. I'm here to get my blessing, said Esau, confused. Old Isaac said, I just gave you your blessing. And Isaac started to realize he had been tricked, just like he thought. Esau started crying and yelling, Bless me too, father. There is no blessing left, said his father sadly. Esau was very upset with his brother, Jacob, for what he had done. So Jacob had to leave quick so he would be safe. After Jacob ran away, he himself was tricked just like he tricked his father. Jacob had to wait seven years before he could be with the woman he wanted to marry. And even then, he was tricked into marrying the wrong woman. What a story. Both brothers did things that they shouldn't have and made bad choices that they couldn't change. Be careful with the choices that you make. You never know how they will change your life later on. Finally, be encouraged. However imperfect we are, God has a plan for our families. Thank you, Elizabeth. And the children will find out more of their story uh, in the Sunday Club this month. We know, like Jacob and Esau, sometimes families fall out and we struggle, and we need, in those moments, God's love, God's forgiveness and grace. And that comes in Jesus, who loves us perfectly. And so we're going to worship the name of Jesus now, who has the power to heal and forgive.
letter, 1 Corinthians, about the nature of love. Really a charter for family life. And I'm going to read to you now. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 7, from the International Children's Bible. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous it does not brag, and it is not proud. Love is not rude, is not selfish, and does not become angry easily. Love does not remember wrongs done against it. Love takes no pleasure in evil but rejoices over the truth. Love patiently accepts all things. It always trusts, always hopes, and always continues strong. Well, I wonder, how would you like to have Jacob and Esau in your family. <laughs> Double trouble, weren't they? Double trouble. They were twins, yes, but so different from one another. Esau was red and hairy, like a human rug, <laughs> costing the family a fortune in shampoo, I should think. <laughs> and his brother Jacob, on the other hand, was smooth, and perhaps too smooth, quite slippery, wasn't he, in his nature. Esau and Jacob, rough and smooth. I think I'm going to call them the Velcro twins. Do you know Velcro? I've got some here with me. Velcro is very handy for bringing things together. Uh, one part of the Velcro is really smooth, and the other part of the Velcro is very rough, and has hooks on it. And if I bring them together like that, we can fasten them tightly together, and they stick. If you're young enough, or of a certain age, you might have Velcro shoes, or you might use a bag at school that has Velcro on it. It's a very, very useful, and you can buy Velcro. Some people say it's a rip-off. <laughs> but Esau and Jacob were the Velcro twins because Born together, they were so close. But in their sin, the wrong choices pulled them apart. Oops, I managed to pull up the microphone apart. There we are. <laughs> we got stuck to the Velcro, didn't it? And that happens a lot in families, doesn't it? It might happen in your family today when we pull apart from one another. Sometimes we're responsible, sometimes we're not responsible. Some things hold us together and some things pull us apart. And isn't it true that the family at home is where our faith in God 
is tested the most, isn't it? By those who know us best of all. Not our Sunday best, but they know us Monday to Saturday as well. So we ask today, how does God want us to behave towards each other? How does God want his families to look like? Well, God has placed us in families to be together. Families are God's idea. He is, as scripture says, the father of all, from whom every family on earth receives its name. God has placed us in families to be together. And it's God who gives our homes and families the love that we need. God has the grace that we need. God has the forgiveness that we need. And when we are in our need, in our families, when there are struggles and difficulties, it's then we can look up to God and say, God, you are here standing in our midst, as we sang, standing in our midst, right in the middle of my family, right in the middle of my difficulty or any trouble or argument or separation, Lord, I want you to come and be right in the middle of it. And God can bring the changes and the healing that we long for. We heard those well-known words from 1 Corinthians, well-known But are they well practiced? We will experience more love and peace in our homes and relationships if we choose to be patient instead of impatient. To be kind instead of mean. To be content instead of envious. To be humble instead of boastful or proud. To be polite instead of rude. Generous instead of selfish. And tolerant instead of always seeing the differences. Jesus shows us how to love, how to be a family. Some things we can't change. We can't change other people. But some things are in our power. And it's those things that I have named just there. And if we today can just move a little bit closer to God, be a bit more like Jesus, we will move that little bit closer to being the families that God wants us to be. To be the church that God wants to be. And the power of the Holy Spirit is that Velcro that brings us together, that holds us strong and unites us as a family, as a church. I read that Velcro is so strong that just a tiny piece is strong enough to hold a person. It's a pity we haven't got time for a demonstration. (laughs) But it's stronger than you think. And I want to say to you, you are stronger than you think. You are stronger in God than you think. He can do far more than we can ask or think. So likewise, just a little bit of that practical love in our families can make all the difference. So, let's learn from Esau and Jacob. Learn from their mistakes. This week, in our homes and in our families, let's have a little less aggro and a little more Velcro. (laughs) Now we're going to respond 
in prayer. And Janet and Sammy are going to come and lead us now. Let us pray. How pleasant it is when women, men and children live together in unity. We thank you God for our families and our homes. Sometimes there is noise and laughter. Sometimes there is quiet and sadness. Sometimes our differences pull us apart. Sometimes love brings us together. Always you're with us. You help us to talk through our problems. You give us grace to forgive. We pray for families in need today. We pray for families facing conflicts or danger. We pray for families who find the cost of living too high. We pray for families where there is sickness. We pray for families broken by grief and loss. Give us your peace and comfort and healing. We believe that love is stronger than hate. That hope is stronger than despair, and that good is stronger than evil. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Let us join in saying together the Lord's Prayer. to all our young people who've taken part in our service today. Um, we now have refreshments and our bring and share lunch in the hall. And our prayer team are available wearing the green lanyards. If you would like to uh, just receive prayer, then please do approach one of them. And they'd like to pray for you. And a reminder that we do now have prayer before our morning service as well from 10 o'clock in the church lounge. It's wonderful to have that covering of prayer for our worship together. And just to mention lastly that two weeks from today in our service of communion, there is the opportunity to be welcomed into church membership. Um, so if that's something you'd like to explore, um, then please do speak with me. So, let us conclude our all-age service as we give Jesus all the honour, the glory and the praise. And may we lift him high in our lives and in our families in this week ahead. That's all right, isn't it?
Victoria is going to come and lead us in our closing prayer. We bring our gifts and our lives to God. God our Father is the head of our of this family. He loves us and he cares for us. The Lord Jesus is our brother and our friend. We follow his teaching to love one another. The Holy Spirit goes ahead of us. He will lead us in God's holy way. God bless you and keep you now and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.